Good morning students. How are you? Hope you are doing great. This is Dr. Vidulasi working as associate professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Vignans Nerula Institute of Technology and Sciences for Women. In the last session we have seen the first unit and uh, let us see what are the contents of the first unit. In the unit one we have seen the structure of the complex systems, the inherent complexity of the software, attributes of the complex system, organized and disorganized complexity, bringing order to chaos, designing complex systems, evolution of object model, foundation of object model, elements of object model, applying the object model. If you have any doubts regarding the topics, you can go back and visit the links given in the YouTube. Coming to the today's session, we are going to see the contents of the unit 2. Coming to the syllabus of unit 2, Today we are going to study about the classes and objects. Here, the nature of the object, relationships among the objects, nature of the classes, relationships among the classes, interplay of classes and objects, identifying classes and objects, importance of proper classification, identifying classes and objects, key abstractions and mechanisms. Let us see the topics one by one. The first topic of today's session is classes and objects. Here we are going to see the brief introduction about the classes and objects. We all know that object is nothing but an instance of class and class is a collection of objects. And then coming to the uh, object oriented analysis, when we use object oriented methods to analyze or design a complex software system, our basic building blocks are classes and objects. And uh, an object is an abstraction of something in a problem domain, reflecting the capabilities of a system to keep information about it, impact with it, and sometimes it, it need to do the both. Objects have an internal state that is recorded in a set of attributes. Objects have a behavior that is expressed in terms of operations. The execution of operations changes the state of the object and stimulates the execution of operations in other objects. Objects have an origin in a real world entity. Classes represent group of objects which have same behavior and their information structures. Every object is an instance of a single class. Class is a kind of type, an abstract data type or an entity. Classes are the same in both analysis and designing. A class defines the possible behaviors and the information structure of all its object instances. This is the brief introduction of the classes and objects, which we have discussed right now. Let us see few real-time applications of the classes and objects. Main application areas of objects and classes are user interface design such as design the windows and menus in the operating system, real-time systems, simulation and modeling, object-oriented databases, artificial intelligence and expert system, neural networks and parallel programming, decision support and office automation systems. Let us see all these applications one by one. Coming to the first application, user interface design such as designing windows and menus of an operating system. The primary goal of object oriented analysis is the development of an accurate and complete representation of the problem domain. It tries to identify the type of objects that map into elements of the application domain to be modeled. To do this, we must examine requirements, analyze their implications and restate them rigorously. We must abstract important real-world features first and defer small details until later implementation stages. A successful analysis model states what must be done without restricting how it is done and avoids implementation decisions. The result of analysis should be a thorough understanding of the problem, which provides a strong preparation for designing. As we can see in the PPT, the menus pointing using mouse is done by using the object methods used while designing. The user chooses an option usually by pointing a mouse at an icon representing that option. This is done by using the graphical user interface. The main features of user interface include 
they are much easier to use for the beginners they enable you to easily exchange information between the software using cut and paste or drag and drop methods this is regarding the first application here we have discussed the how objects and classes are useful in the designing the user interfaces next coming to the second application that is real time systems so real time object oriented modeling is a modeling language for the definition of the software systems it allows the complete code generation for the whole system from the model real time object oriented modeling comes with a textual as well as with a graphical notation typically the generated code is accompanied with manually written code for example graphical user interface the code is compiled and linked against a runtime library which provides base classes and basic services here if you see the ppt here, uh, here you can see a aeroplane is flying in the air such real time structures are designed by using this objects and classes the structural view of real time object oriented modeling is composed of actors or capsules actors can communicate with each other using ports those ports are connected by bindings actors do exchange messages asynchronously via ports and bindings to each port a unique protocol is assigned a protocol in real time object oriented modeling defines a set of outgoing and a set of incoming messages ports can be connected with a binding if they belong to the same protocol and are conjugate to each other this is regarding the real time applications used by classes and objects next coming to the third application simulation and modeling as a given business system or a mechanical process executes the activities and actions within it might generate objects of a specific type and perform operations on those objects perhaps even consuming or destroying them here in the ppt you can see an example how the pistol is simulated here you can simulate the creation use and consumption of such objects using a simulation model that represents the objects and actions with the modal elements such as classes instance objects attributes operations and ports the model can also create act on and destroy several different objects at different stages as a part of some process and the representing modal data or objects in simulation makes the simulation more accurately reflect the real process after completion of the simulation next we will see the coming to the next application that is object oriented databases object oriented databases are databases that represent data in the form of objects and classes in object oriented terminology an object is a real world entity and a class is a collection of objects here in the ppt you can see an object oriented database here how the data is transmitted between the databases and the endpoint using the object oriented concepts object oriented databases follow the fundamental principles of object oriented programming the combination of relational model features such as concurrency transaction and recovery with the object oriented principles results in the object oriented database model the object oriented database model is an alternative implementation to the re relational model an object oriented database is similar in principle to the object oriented programming language an object oriented database management system is a hybrid application that uses a combination of object oriented and relational database principles to process the data from database to the end user coming to the next application artificial intelligence and expert systems expert system is an interactive and reliable computer based decision making system which uses both the facts and heuristics to solve complex decision making problems it is considered at the highest level of human intelligence and expertise the purpose of an expert system is to solve the most complex issues in a specific domain the figure in the ppt shows how the expert system works here if you see the figure the user will be interacting with the workstation it gives the expert advice how it gets the expert advice means by using interface programming it interacts with the interface engine program next that will be given to the knowledge base and knowledge base will connect the information from the expert system development 
expert system develop, uh, system development gets the information from the expert he the expert gives to the information to the workstation and the knowledge acquisition program gives the information to the knowledge base this is regarding the expert system the expert system can resolve many issues which generally would require a human expert it is based on knowledge acquired from an expert it is also capable of expressing and reasoning about some domain of knowledge expert systems were the predecessors of the current today artificial intelligence deep learning and machine learning systems the oops concepts is used in the configuration of manufactured objects the user interface is the most crucial part of the expert systems this component takes the user's query in the readable form and passes it to the interface engine after that it displays the results to the user in other words it is an interface that helps the user communicate with the expert system this is how the objects and classes are used in the artificial intelligence and expert systems next coming to the next application that is neural networks and parallel programming a neural network is a series of algorithms that endeavors to recognize underlying relationships in a set of data through a process that mimics the way the human brain operates in this sense neural networks refers to the system of neurons either organic or artificial in nature neural networks can adapt to changing its input so the network generates the best possible results without needing to redesign the output criteria as you can see in the ppt how the neural network works in parallel to identify the objects if you see the ppt here there are two objects dog and cat when they are given as input to the neural networks it identifies the dog this is how the neural network works neural network in the world of finance assist in the development of such process as time series forecasting algorithmic trading securities classification credit risk modeling and constructing proprietary indicators and price derivatives can be analyzed next coming to the parallel programming in very simple term it is a use of multiple resources in this case processes to solve a problem this type of programming takes a problem breaks it down into a series of smaller steps delivers instructions and processes execute the solution at the same time it is also a form of programming that offers the same results as concurrent programming but in less time with the more efficiency many computers such as laptops and parallel desktops using this programming in the hardware to ensure that tasks are quickly completed in the background coming to the last application decision support and office automation systems a decision support system is a computerized program used to support a determinations judgments and courses of action in an organization or a business a decision support system sifts through and analyzes massive amounts of data compiling comprehensive information that can be used to solve problems and in decision making office automation is a process of watching data flow around on its own without any human intervention in accuracies and error it is a process of using an automation tool to create collect store analyze and share confidential office data that is required to accomplish basic day to day routine tasks and processes efficiently you can see in the ppt how the decision support systems is used to decide the best for the plants based on the disease identified in the plants in the second figure you can see how the automation is carrying in the industries without human interventions technology has made a serious impact on the daily work of the office administrations emails have replaced with memos shared drives have gone away with the filing cabinets and biometrics have taken over employees time sheet stamping many businesses think that they have attained office automation nirvana simply by going paperless this is regarding the applications hope you have understood well about the concepts let's have a quick recap about the topics what we have gone through today's session we have seen the nature of the object that the nature of the object is uh, of uh, it should be of uh, three types first one is tangible or visible thing second one is it should be apprehended intellectually and next one is it should the uh, thought or action directed next coming to the what is object 
In this, we have seen that object is a tangible entity that exhibits some well-defined behavior. So, which is a physically visible is object and which is not physical physically visible. Uh, it means time, beauty, air, colors are not uh, objects. And we have seen that uh, three properties of the object, they are state, behavior, identity. Here we have seen also the operations of an object. And uh, coming to the operations, we have seen five types of operations. First one is modifier, selector, iterator, constructor and destructor. Next uh, we have seen the object lifespan. In that we have seen a image of uh, a person from the birth to the death to represent the life, uh, lifespan of an object. Next we have gone through the roles and responsibilities. So role is nothing but a mask and the responsibilities of a person who plays the role. And next we have seen the relationships among the objects. We have seen two types of relationships. First one is links and second one is aggregation. Next we have seen the nature of the class. We know that class is a set of objects that share the common structure and a common behavior. In this we have seen an example TV and it is having three instances First one is Derek's and second one is John and uh, Job. These are the three instances of a class TV and that example we have seen in the nature of the class. Next we have seen the class life cycle. In this life cycle how the class is interacting with the other operations has been seen. Relationships among the classes has been seen here. The relationships are association, inheritance, aggregation, using, instantiation and meta class. Next we have seen the interplay of classes and objects and uh, next we have seen the classification and uh, the classification means whereby we order the knowledge. Here we have seen the difficulty of the classification. Next uh, we have seen identifying the classes and objects and this we have seen three types. First one is classical categorization, second one is conceptual clustering and third one is the prototype theory. And coming to the next one, how you identify the classes and objects by using this object oriented analysis. Here we have seen six approaches. First one is classical approach and second one is behavioral analysis. Third one is domain analysis. Fourth one is use case analysis. Fifth one is CRC cards and sixth one is structured analysis. And next we have seen the key abstractions and mechanisms. In this we have seen the how to identify the key abstractions how to find the key abstractions and uh, in this unit we have entirely covered about the objects and classes and uh, now coming to the quiz part see in the quiz part i have given some questions those are what is an object what is a class what are operations of objects what are relationships of objects what are the roles played by object during the participation in link i told the three roles if you can remember those three roles you know the answer what are the relationships of classes what are the types of inheritance inheritance also i told two types first one is single inheritance second one is multi multiple inheritance and next what is classification what are the general approaches of classification? Name the object oriented analysis approaches. I told the six methods. What is meant by key abstraction? What are the approaches to identify the classes and objects? These are the quiz questions and this unit two. If you can answer these questions, I hope that you understood the class well. If you have any doubts, don't worry. Go back and play the videos. Thank you so much. Let's meet in the next session. Till then, have a safe day. Follow SMS, sanitizers, masks and social distancing. Also, wash your hands thoroughly. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you once again.